Welcome to this edition of What Parents Need to Know, a show with tips and insight into Pinellas County Schools. In this episode, we talk with Joan Rubens, a bullying prevention specialist for the district, and Officer Jerry Lutman with Schools Police about ways to spot bullying and what your students should do if they witness it. We'll see how schools throughout the district are doing their part to prevent cyberbullying, plus tips for parents on how to talk to your child about the impact that bullying can have and the long-term consequences. Cyberbullying among students is a problem that can be tough to spot and difficult to solve. As more and more kids use the internet and social media more, the number of students who experience cyberbullying firsthand is on the rise. So what can we do to help? Joining me now is Joan Rubens. She is the Bullying Prevention Specialist with Pinellas County Schools. Joan, thank you for being here. What are some things that parents can look out for if they suspect that their child is either bullying others or being bullied? Well, I think some of the things to think about from, from the perspective of what bullying is, we have the verbal types of bullying that occur, the physical and the relational, those friendship type bullying, um, but also the cyber bullying. And I think what parents need to watch out for is um, their child's demeanor when they come home from school. Um, how was your day? Who are your friends? Um, what was said? And if, if their child is being victimized, then you want them to be able to share that information. But also, too, if their child is actually doing the bullying, um, you can look at some of those behaviors, too, you know, that, that dominating and controlling types of behaviors um, to get um, power and control in a negative way. So parents really need to look out for those types of um, indicators with and their I, children. I know some of these forms of bullying are not so clear cut. Obviously, physical bullying is easier to spot, but a lot of parents want to respect their children's privacy. What can parents look for in terms of cyberbullying? What do they need to do? Well, parents must know where their children are online. They must know their passwords. Um, they also must know, too, that on, on the social um, networking sites, our kids have to be 13 for um, Facebook or um, Instagram. <laughs> um, they need to be able to spot those and be able to know that they're, if their ch child is not of age to be on there, they shouldn't. But look through their, if they do have one, look through their Instagram account, look through the Facebook account, know the passwords, um, look through their cell phones, see what's going on. And really more importantly too, at night, laptops and cell phones do not go in the bedrooms. They are out in a, in a, um, uh, a common place in the house where they're being charged for the next day. This can be a bit of a tricky issue. A lot of cyberbullying happens at home and online. So what is the district doing to help prevent it? We have um, an online balloon report form bullying.pcsb.org and students, parents, anyone is encouraged to report that way. Um, they can also let somebody know at the school in, in writing or verbally let them know. Joan, what should a student do if they're being bullied or they're witnessing bullying behavior among their peers? Well, number one, they must report it. They must report it to any adult, a trusted adult. Um, and it could be a par uh, an adult at the school or it can be an adult at home. Um, but also, too, if they see that bullying is happening, don't become a part of it. Don't laugh, because that only encourages the kids that are being inappropriate to continue. But it also tells the child that is being victimized, we don't care about you, and you know, no one's going to help you. And we know that that's not the case with our kids. Kids want to help. What are some of the individual ways that schools are taking a stand against bullying and cyberbullying? Well, many of our schools, well, all of our schools in Pinellas County are doing something in the schools, but many of them have actual programs in the school that is school-wide. So it, it works with the students, it works with the staff, the parents, the community, um, but it's getting that message out there, but also talking about what bullying is and what it's not. Um, and whether we think it's bullying, if a report comes into us, we take it and we investigate to make sure that um, safety is for all in the school. So it sounds like when in doubt, go ahead and report it so it can be investigated fully? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. All right, and thank you, Joan, so much for joining us. We appreciate it, and be sure to stay with us because we'll be joined again soon by Officer Jerry Lutman on ways Pinal County Schools Police are spotting and preventing bullying. Last week, as part of a national effort to bring awareness to the dangers and consequences of cyberbullying, Several Pinellas County schools participated in a week of events to highlight ways students can take a stand against all forms of bullying. At Dunedin High School, the Principal's Multicultural Advisory Committee encouraged students to take part in several theme days, including Be a Hero, Take a Stand Against Cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is a problem that's on the rise, but so are the efforts against it. Throughout the district, several Pinellas County schools held events to take a stand against bullying, 
during the National Cyberbullying Week. Um, this week at Dinian High School was Cyberbullying Week, so every single day we kind of dressed up different. And today was be a superhero to someone, don't like, don't stop and try to stop other people from bullying. So be a superhero to another person. At Dunedin, the school's principal's multicultural advisory committee encouraged students to participate in several dress-up days to raise awareness and to sign a pledge promising they will not bully others. All students do admit that it's a problem, but they're still so drawn to it. So we really need to work hard um, to promote a culture of kindness. It's gone to the point where there are suicides and there are people who go to that point where they're like, I've gotten made fun of so badly that I don't really feel like I want to deal with it anymore. Cyberbullying can happen anywhere at any time. Victims are harassed on social media sites, their phone, or on the web. It's really sad to see how like people are completely different behind the screen because there's no one there to stop them. There's that screen you can hide behind, and if someone confronts you face to face, sometimes you're like, whoa, I don't really want to deal with it. But if there's a screen, they're like, they're not talking to me, I can say whatever I want. That is an attitude students themselves are trying to stop. And once they do, they hope awareness, prevention, and compassion catch on. Hopefully it just compounds again out to the community of treating each other with compassion and kindness and in including all of us that we're all different and we that's okay, that's good. Victims of cyberbullying usually admit they are also bullied in real life. Students and staff throughout Pinellas County want them to know there's a whole network of support to help. But they're not alone. There's so many people that are being bullied and some of them don't even know what to do and think that they don't have anyone to support, but we're all here to support them and we want, we want it over. We don't want it to keep continuing. Members of Dunedin High School's PMAC plan to continue their awareness campaign for cyberbullying throughout the school year. Within the last few years, Officer Jerry Lutman has become Pinellas County Schools Police resident expert on cyberbullying. He's helped determine some ways to encourage kids to stop being mean behind the screen. Officer Lutman joins me now on other ways that school resource officers are helping to prevent bullying in our schools and just how prevalent is this problem right now? It's very prevalent throughout every school in Pinellas County as well as schools in different counties throughout the state and throughout the nation with uh, social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, the old MySpace. Kids now have a new medium to talk to other kids and also bully them as well. Officer Lutman, I think a lot of students who participate in cyberbullying really kind of are living in the moment, but don't really always think about the consequences. What are some of those consequences? Long-term consequences are it may be fun and games at the beginning. However, if it continues, even after administrative staff has taken action against those students, they can actually begin to face charges criminally of uh, stalking and harassment. What are some other ways that school resource officers at individual schools are helping to prevent and spot cyberbullying? Uh, most SROs, uh, myself, uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation that I do to parents. I give the parents, uh, the staff members have seen it, people from the Sheriff's Department have seen it. I'm also part of a Crime Stoppers meeting where they have seen it. A lot of parents come away with uh, how great they think it is because it starts from the very beginning stages of bullying all the way to the stages of a suicidal individual because they've been picked on a lot. Uh, other SOs have also picked up on that PowerPoint presentation to my knowledge. Uh, we have two. I have one for Safety Harbor Middle which is the same thing and then there's one for the entire Pinellas County School System. So working close by uh, the administrative staff, letting them know what the law is and how far they can go, what they can do from the administrative side to the criminal side is pretty much what everybody does right now. How important is that outreach effort? Obviously, you're dealing with a section of our population who's a bit more technologically savvy than their parents. So how important is it to educate the parents about what to look for? It's very important. Uh, a lot of times when I do the presentations or panels or I've been uh, on other interviews, what I like to recommend to the parents, if you're paying for the cell phone and you're paying for the cell phone service or the internet service, you have every right to watch what your son or daughter are doing and what they're posting on those websites. So just maybe setting some boundaries. Oh yes, and definitely having the passwords. All right, thank you so much, Officer You're Lutman. Welcome. We'll have more information on how to prevent and spot cyberbullying on our website. This year marked Pinellas County Schools' first ever cyberbullying week. Drama students at Thurgood Marshall Fundamental Middle School took part in the campaign by creating several skits to help the entire campus understand the dangers of cyberbullying.
Well, this week we're recognizing uh, cyberbullying awareness and bully prevention awareness. And uh, what we've done is we've, instead of having a one week of festivity, we've extended that to two weeks in light of the recent uh, tragedy that happened in the area. So we feel it's important to emphasize the importance and more specifically the effects of bullying and cyberbullying. And we want to empower our students and our staff with strategies to address bullying and cyberbullying and to address it productively. It's funny because there's one thing hearing it from me, but when the kids hear it from their colleagues and the student body, it, it resonates a little bit better. We're performing a skit a day at lunch for two weeks. So all three of the lunches here, we're performing a different skit about cyberbullying and try to teach the kids that cyberbullying is wrong. I've been in two skits so far at the lunches. My first one was yesterday and it was about girls texting and group messages, being mean to this one girl. And then I came out and stood up for the girl. And then today, the skit was about the different parts that come into cyberbullying, like the actual bully, the victim, the bystanders. I hope they realize that bullying is really bad and that nobody should be bullied. And it could really hurt somebody physically and emotionally. I have learned if you see somebody being bullied, I don't think that you should go in it straight away and try to stamp up for that person. I think that you should tell a teacher because if you go straight and like go to that person and start like telling them to not bully, they'll probably bully you. So I would say tell a teacher. I hope the kids that see this get, get that we they should stop cyberbullying because it makes people feel bad, first of all, and it really affects their everyday life, not just in school. It just affects their everyday life. I'm hoping the kids that watch this, um, for one, identify the importance um, of bullying and cyberbullying, the effects of it, and how they can uh, productively assist with stomping out bullying and cyberbullying through reporting it to a teacher, through you know having conversation with their parents, and also getting an adult involved when they observe or when they're a victim of bullying or cyberbullying. I hope our message is getting through to everyone because to me cyberbullying is the worst kind of bullying because like you can hit someone in real life and it'll sting for a minute but it'll go away and when someone tells you something those words stay inside you and you never really forget them. Do your part to stop cyberbullying. The district cyberbullying week wrapped up with a concert held for all Pinellas County School students at Madeira Beach Fundamental School. Now let's take a look at information parents need to know with our student reporter, Michaela Insi. Thanks, Lisa. Here are a few things parents need to know about cyberbullying. Did you know that there are several types of bullying? Learn about them all and how to spot them on the bullying prevention page of the district's website. You can report any form of bullying, harassment, or teen dating violence and abuse anytime online at bullying.pcsb.org. Pinellas County Schools is committed to stopping bullying among students. During No Name Calling Week in January, the district will participate in an annual week of educational activities aimed at ending name calling and verbal bullying. The district has made several online resources available for parents and educators. If you want advice on how to talk to your student about bullying, click the free Bullying Prevention Resources tab on the district's Bullying Prevention page. You might consider taking the time to explain what exactly bullying is with your student. There is a guide of what Pinellas County Schools considers bullying on the Overview of Bullying tab of the Bullying Prevention page. That's a wrap of some of the things parents need to know happening throughout the district. Lisa. Thanks, Michaela. That's all the time we have for this episode of What Parents Need to Know. Don't forget you can watch any of our episodes and find up-to-date information on our website at newsroom.pcsb.org. To watch more episodes, just click the video series tab and select What Parents Need to Know. Thanks for watching.